Hello, everyone, and welcome to In Time. Um, I do want to check real quick and make sure. So this is not showing any outbound sound. So let me just make sure. But let's let's see if uh, I, I'm muted as usual. This is suggesting there's no outbound sound. That is odd. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until I get some verification that that you guys can hear me, and then um, barring that. Uh, let me just let me just check and and see why we might not have outbound sound. All right, so um, uh, I'm gonna just wait until I I get some kind. Of, oh, they hear me. Okay, perfect. Uh, I guess the uh, the dial is bad on that. No worries. Thank you very much. All right, so welcome to uh, overtime, and uh, let's start with the rundown. In uh, Myanmar, the commander-in-chief of the military, Min Ong Halang, uh, has staged a coup d'etat, seizing power and uh, detaining the country's leader, Aung San, um, oh Jesus, Aung San Ayukai, on the grounds that her election in November was uh, based on voter fraud. Multiple independent observers have stated that the election was fair and that Kai's popularity and the popularity of her party, the National League for Democracy, is more than double that of the military's proxy party. Nonetheless, the military has said that it is declaring a one-year state of emergency and that it will hold another election after that time. The international airport has been shut down. Domestic flights have been canceled. The internet and cell reception is uh, intermittent. An Kai is no stranger to being detained. She spent 15 years under local house arrest uh, the last time the military took control in Myanmar. Uh, in 1991, she received the Nobel Peace Prize for her nonviolent resistance to the military junta. The military leader, Halang, has been accused of serious human rights violations against um, the Rohingya, Ro Rohingya. Excuse me. And... Um, uh, which includes, but is not limited to, shooting civilians as they fled and credible reports of mass rape. Uh, just to be clear, those are his uh, accusations from the last time uh, he was in power. Uh, as of yet, he has, he has just uh, took over. Um, this is, I'm, we're not saying that this is what has, is happening right now in Myanmar, but uh, that is uh, his, his previous record. Uh, United States Secretary of State, it's nice to have a new one, uh, Anthony Bl uh, Blinken, 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 has said that the Biden administration has, quote, great concern and alarm over the coup d'etat. Quote, the United States stands with the people of Burma in their aspiration for democracy, freedom, peace, and development. The military must reverse these actions immediately. China, on the other hand, uh, posted in their uh, state-run news that in uh, Myanmar, there has been a, quote, major cabinet reshuffling. That is their description of the coup d'etat. Now, in uh, uh, 2013, China announced a brand new infrastructure project, a $900 billion um, dollar trade corridor spanning uh, from China through Central Asia, India, the Middle East, and Europe. Called the Trade Belt, it was dubbed a uh, new Silk Road, with the goal of the project being to increase trade and to um, lift up smaller neighboring countries to China out of poverty. Ostensibly, however, it was also, or I shouldn't say ostensibly, those are the ostens ostensibly, those were the reasons. However, there was probably another reason. Uh, and that is that it gives them far more economic control over the region. They are trying to consolidate their power in the areas around them. Broken up into over 900 smaller sub-projects, the Africa and Central Asia parts of this belt have already begun construction. They're being paid for by the host countries. So China is only paying for the development in China, not for the development, obviously, in in. Uh, the other countries where this uh, belt would go through. However, most of these countries can't afford to pay for uh, this project. So it is being paid for in general by the three big banks in China, sorry, four uh, Chinese banks, 
uh, which are loaning these countries the money that they need in order to make this project. Now, the uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank was a new bank launched explicitly for this reason in January of 2016. It is um, the, the only reason this bank exists is to loan these other countries the money they need to create this project, which those countries have been told, look, it's going to bring uh, trade, especially from China, straight to you. It's going to be one again, one brand new Silk Road, going to go all around, and um, that's uh, worth them investing in, at least according to China. However, the loans are at an exorbitantly high interest rate, and it appears as if it's um, uh, maybe even predatory uh, and is going to allow, while it will in fact allow th those countries to uh, create these, uh, this infrastructure without the need of putting their own capital into it, it does mean that they're going to be in hock to China and possibly for a great deal of time, increasing China's leverage over these countries. Why does it matter? Because Myanmar is one of those countries, and China has a vested interest in Myanmar contributing to this and in Myanmar going into debt to China. The um, previous leader, the legitimate uh, leader in Myanmar, um, uh, Aung San Suu Kai, I'm hoping I'm getting that reasonably close to accurate, she has... Um, voiced uh, concerns over this project and that she uh, certainly does not want the country to go into debt forever to China. She has the best interests of the country at heart. The military leader, Hilang, uh, Hil, uh, Hil 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 I'm going to say Hilang, has, um, uh, really is just interested apparently in his own power and is interested in uh, whatever he can do to amass power and money. He, uh, they recently just, uh, was it recently? I think it was recently, took a, an aid shipment and the military, it was for the civilians and the military took it and <laughs> used it for themselves. So he's not a particularly nice guy and again already has human rights violations on his record. So uh, he probably would be much more interested in dealing with the Chinese, especially if it's gonna line his pockets than a democratically elected government, which would have the interest of the people at heart. We in the United States obviously has uh, have a, a considerably greater interest in seeing more democracies in the world. We support the democratically elected government. China will probably not advertise it, but nonetheless will probably support the uh, uh, military government as much as they can uh, because they stand to make much more money and in fact to possibly turn uh, Myanmar into a satellite country of their own. So now let me um Apologies, I'm having one uh, technical issue that I want to take a look at Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's that's accurate. All right, so, and I'm going to take that off. I actually probably don't need that now that the show has started. And I'm going to bring up our Discord because I want to check our Discord real quick. But um, what that ends up meaning is that we are likely to face, oh, and it looks like, hold on one sec. Oh, um, it looks like Vox is interested in, in joining us. So um, let me get her a link. Would very much like to have her. Let me get her um, a link right now so she can join us. The other thing uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish what I was saying earlier, but the other thing is um, we have uh, Dorito in the Discord. Uh, D Thompson, he. Uh, former military and was actually stationed there and knows a great deal about what's going on. So I've asked if he would be uh, willing to hang out in the voice chat for a little bit after the show in our, v in our um, uh, Discord 
and fill anyone in on uh, sort of any of the things that he had brought to uh, our attention. And he has a lot of uh, very interesting insider information on uh, what, what's going on over there. So he is a uh, valuable resource and uh, has kindly agreed to be in our Discord in the voice chat uh, after the show ends. I will also drop in there for a little bit. I look forward to uh, catching up with anybody who uh, wants to join us. So we will drop a link to the Discord in a few minutes. Uh, yeah, it's a proxy conflict, and I'm going to get into that in one second, but I would like uh, really first to get, um, there it is, get a uh, link for Vox. Who? Um, da, da, da. There we go. Perfect. Oh, all right. No, Vox, it looks like um. All right. Um, so we missed Vox. So that's unfortunate. Let me get back into the rundown in a minute. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what, uh, what do you need to gain access to space? That lays? You have to be Jewish. Um... Yeah, yeah, uh, you you have to be Jewish, Porpoise. I'm um, just FYI. I'm just I'm not trying to be. That's just that's unfortunately the way it is. Not my fault. I didn't write those rules. So um, what we're looking at is uh, now China is in fact interested in the stability of Myanmar. They don't want Myanmar to become unstable. Then they're not going to be able to make any money. So they're not necessarily pleased that there has been a coup d'état there. But uh, now that it's happened. Uh, they are more interested in in maintaining whatever the status quo is, especially the military leadership, if at all possible. Uh, again, they have said they're going to stay in power for a year, which is probably long enough for them to rig whatever elections they are interested in rigging. Um, however, uh, they also, like I said, China doesn't necessarily want democratic rule there. And given um, our intersection uh, between uh, our interests and China's, what it looks like is perhaps uh, another proxy war being set up uh, very much like what happened in Syria, where we would end up fighting China through Myanmar, attempting to leverage the, the well, I, again, we, we want democracy, but I think attempting to leverage the situation to try to deny China what it is they're looking for, which is greater economic leverage over the entire region. So... Joy. Now, as to um, Jewish space lasers, uh, here's the deal on that. Last week, it was revealed that uh, Representative Majori Taylor Green, a staunch supporter of Trump, a conspiracy theorist uh, with links to uh, right wing, far right wing extremist groups, uh, voiced in 2019 before she was elected her opinion that. Democratic lawmakers should be executed. She also has repeated that uh, Parkland, the Parkland school shooting, one of the worst school shootings in U.S. history, was in fact a false flag event made by the U.S. government and actors pretending to have had their kids murdered and slaughtered in the school. She has also recently suggested, yes that the California wildfires were started by a Jewish space laser. I don't know what makes it Jewish. I don't, maybe it had a bat mitzvah. I don't know, but apparently it's Jewish and it set fires in California and devastated California. It was not Pacific Gas and Electric who has actually taken responsibility. It was a Jewish space laser. This is her here in Congress. This was taken, I think, yesterday. Uh, and this is her demonstrating her concern for the safety and well-being of her fellow Democratic lawmakers. Technically, I guess she is wearing the mask, so she's not in violation of the, of the new rules. Um, yeah. 
That's that's Representative Green. So uh, last week, she was awarded a seat on the House Education and Labor Committee. She was also awarded a seat on the House Budget Committee. Democrats have signaled their intention at this point to expel her from the House, but in the meantime, have issued an ultimatum. The Republicans will strip Green of her committee assignments within the next 72 hours, or they, uh, the Re- Democrats will introduce legislation uh, or introduce a resolution doing it themselves. Green has remained defiant and has posted a letter suggesting that the more people who attack her and lie about her and her precious um, Jewish space laser, uh, the more donations she gets, the more powerful she becomes, and um, she's not going to apologize or um, change her views on anything just for something called reality. So, um, yeah. Just one week before the Senate is expected to uh, try Donald Trump on charges of inciting insurrection, Trump's entire legal team resigned. Starting uh, last night and in through today, every one of his five-member team uh, have quit Former South Carolina federal prosecutors Greg Harris and John Johnny Glazier, South Carolina lawyer uh, Butch Bowers and Deborah Barber, uh, along with North Carolina attorney Josh Howard. It started with one of them resigning yesterday, and by the time we got through today, they were all gone. There's been no official declaration that I'm aware of as to why they resigned, but. A uh, member of CNN has reported that Trump had instructed his lawyers to use the defense that he won the election. That's not a defense, even if it were true, which it's not. That's not a defense. The lawyer said they wanted to make a constitutional argument, uh, specifically around the fact that he cannot be even tried for impeachment since he is no longer president. That's, in my view, a pretty good argument, one that has a winning shot. The argument that he won the election is immaterial. It is, it's completely non sequitur to the charges against him. It has nothing to do with the charges against him. And the lawyers could probably face some ethics issues. Now, keep in mind, This is not a trial in the common sense. It is not a trial in the judicial branch. So the rules of ethics don't necessarily apply. The lawyers could, if they wanted to, lie or do anything. This isn't a trial in in the judicial sense. It's a trial in the congressional sense. So, um, but nonetheless, the lawyers could still uh, run afoul of some ethics violations if they make claims and arguments that they know are not true. They could certainly also find themselves in the same trouble Trump is in for lying about the election. Uh, They don't want to do it. They've bailed. At least that's what it appears to be the case at this point. So uh, facing potential jeopardy, they have all resigned their positions, and Trump has now acquired a uh, new firm to represent him whether or not they will be willing to make an argument that has actually nothing to do with the charges against him has yet to be determined. I highly doubt Trump's going to change his mind, but we'll see. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of people took to the streets in Russia in support of jailed opposition leader leader, um, Alexei Navalny. Navalny, that's probably correct. Um, Russian authorities have attempted to quell these protests and have arrested over 5,100 people. People in uh, just uh, just today alone. Now, the op- this is the first time an opposition leader has been arrested and has successfully gotten any kind of demonstration against him. People are in the streets shouting "Down with Putin!" That's stunning. A year ago, if you said that in the streets of Moscow, you'd be dead. Uh, the fact that there are thousands now doing it is is revolutionary in every sense of the word. So we will see what happens. Um, at first, my initial thinking was, I'll oh, just kill him and be done with it. But then you turn him into a martyr. So they've got a problem. If I recall, they've actually now detained his wife. Um, 
Uh, yeah. So they've now detained his wife, and we will um, see what happens. Yeah, I, I studied Russian for a while, so in theory, I, I can speak the language. Who knows? Hey, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> All right. So at any rate, um, I think that it just about covers it. I feel like, oh, I am missing one other thing. The um, uh, An update on the... I wanted to kind of stay out of this because I don't want to get lost in the weeds. The GameStop thing, uh, the people at... There's one thing that's kind of concerned me with the GameStop, and we discussed it very briefly when we had our, our show on it, which is how much of the discussions about, hey, we're trolling these guys and we had this planned is post hoc. So I have no doubt a few people suggested it. And then uh, in terms of doing it explicitly to attack the banks, then um, they go ahead and do it and it's wildly successful. And everyone says, oh yeah, that was really the whole plan from the beginning. So I, I don't know. It has a, a small tinge of that, but it's hard to say. But uh, Elizabeth Warren has said that she wants to get to the bottom of what exactly happened and who started it. Good luck with that. It's going to take a while. But they now are saying that they're going after silver. This has caused silver prices to go up by about 30%, which is quite a lot. It's not the, um, what was it, 1,000%, 1,100% that GameStop did. But they've been going after silver. But because in the stock market, Perception and reality are essentially the same thing. Actually, they're not, but you can, you, can, you can commit the reality by changing the perception. So if you want something to be true, simply convince people that it is true, and uh, you can make it true. You can cause a bank to fail that way if you'd like. Say, well, there's a run on the bank, and everyone's going to lose their money. Enough people believe it. They tried to pull their money out of the bank. That creates a run on the bank. So if they say, as a group, we're going to go after silver, everybody says, ooh, if they do that, if they do another short squeeze and they do one on, on silver, silver prices are going to go through the roof. So if you think silver prices are going to go through the roof, what are you going to do? You're going to buy silver. That causes a run on silver, and all of a sudden, silver prices go through the roof. So whether or not it is the subject of uh, a or the target of another short squeeze, or they're just saying that to manipulate the market. Who knows? It's one of the things that gets very difficult when trying to understand what's really going on. Um, uh, what's really going on, excuse me, it's uh, very difficult to understand what's really going on, and uh, far more than most people give credit for. But nonetheless, they are saying that they're attempting another squeeze on silver, and there seems to be some pushback as to how deliberate this was and how much this was just incidental or uh, uh, a lucky accident is what I meant to say. So um, I don't know. At this point, I think for us, the most important thing was just that it happened and that at a minimum, I think it was a very good lesson on how the stock market works, what a short squeeze is and how shorts work. So, uh, you know, if, if these guys keep going and they make... Wall Street bankers hesitate a bit before doing some unscrupulous shit. Great, whether or not they actually have or, or will continue to do that, I think is is either we do a show on that, an in-time show on it, or, or we leave it. I don't know if there's much more breaking news, but I figured we had a few minutes, so let you guys know on that. So, at any rate, what I'm going to do here is go over the, uh, see if there's anything in the live chat that needs to be covered. I think we've just about covered everything. Like I said, we'll, we'll drop a link to Discord in just a minute, but um, uh, uh, Dave Thompson will be there to talk about his experiences and uh, what he's seen uh, uh, going on in Myanmar up, up a, a bit before this, but he's he's uh, got some, some valuable insights, so he's going to be in, in our Discord. Um, I will join our Discord in a little bit, and we'll... Uh, see what's going on. So yeah, I think I think um, I, I think we did a good show. Our our show on the GameStop thing. I think if you want a good primer on how shorts work, I think I think that one worked out pretty well. So um, and uh, let's see. Was that? Oh, it looks like there's a healthy live chat, but 
Um, it doesn't look like there are any questions, so uh, just to do sort of a, a basic rundown, we'll be in VC in just a few minutes after the show. Dave will be there. He's got um, a lot of experience in this area and I think is a valuable resource. Um, the protests in Russia have gotten to be uh, very large. It's uh, tens of thousands of people, which is stunning. That kind of thing just doesn't happen in Russia because they kill anyone who tries to organize something like that. Nonetheless, it's happening, and they have now detained and or arrested uh, as many as 5,100 people. They have another protest planned for tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Um, we're going to see, too, just how well he's controlled his propaganda machine because everybody there says they love him. But they kind of have to say they love them. <laughs> so we'll see what happens if they don't have to say that anymore. So meanwhile, in, Mir uh, in uh, Myanmar, the commander in chief of the military, Ming Ong Klang, uh, staged a coup d'etat. He has taken over the country and he has jailed their legitimate uh, uh, leader, Ong Sang Ayu Kai. And this is now at least her second time facing uh, house arrest. The last time was for 15 years, and she won a Nobel Peace Prize during that time for her nonviolent resistance to uh, the military junta at the time. So that's uh, those are the big stories, and uh, it looks like uh, with the U.S. I think maybe headed for a proxy fight in Myanmar through uh, with China. We'll see. China needs it because it's the best and fastest road to India. It's going to complete their belt, the new um, the new uh, Silk Road project. So it's important to them, but they might be able to have it under de democratic leadership. It really depends on whether uh, it depends on whether or not the ele uh, democratically elected government thinks it's a good idea. And it's a little harder to convince democratically elected governments to let you leverage them into permanent debt. So we'll see. So, um, let's see. I think that's a good point about the shorts. Um, I, well, I think, I think, I think the other reason they exist, they exist for the same reason default stocks exist, uh, swaps exist and, uh, um, what is it? Emeritized mortgage-backed securities exists. It exists because if there, if there's another way to trade and bet, it's legalized gambling. If there's another way to trade and bet on the stock market, they will invent one. And regular trading allows you to bet that a stock will go up. There isn't much of a way to bet that a stock will go down, although essentially that is what a sale is. I mean, if you're selling the stock, presumably you're selling it because you think the cost is going to go down. Uh, somebody else thinks it's going to go up. That's why um, uh, people buy and sell. It's essentially a zero-sum game for every every trade. Somebody bets right, somebody bets wrong. But if you want to bet that, really bet that a stock's going to go down, that's what a short is for. But um, yep, all right. And then I think there was a yeah. I I like Elizabeth Warren, but she. Um, does strike me as a little cynical that way, and and she does have a, a um, um, she does have a tendency, in my view, to um, uh, to sort of change her positions with what's popular. <laughs> she's, she's a populist. Is is um, okay. I have a I have a question. Is this going to be a stand up fight or another bug hunt? I'm not entirely sure what that is. Why does that sound like that's out of like Starship Troopers. Um, all right. Um, since I don't know what that is, I'll give another second for that to, to maybe be clarified. Uh, and I will sort of uh, say this. Please, if you've reached it this far in the show, hopefully you uh, appreciate what it, what we do. Uh, we've got our Patreon hangout uh, coming out. Uh, we're going to be do, doing our Patreon hang. Oh, it's aliens. Oh, yeah, it's aliens. Okay, should have guessed. Um, we're going to do a Patreon hangout coming up. So it's still it's not too late to become a patron. Join us for the hangout and uh, get other rewards. Link is in the description. Uh, if you uh, can't or don't want to for whatever reason, fine. Another great way to support us is uh, like and subscribe, and um, uh, that that helps us in the algorithm. It really does. So if you've gotten here and you've liked the show, please do remember to uh, like and subscribe. 
tell your friends too. We're gonna we're gonna start um, trying to grow the channel again. We've been sort of while well, we've been doing the production, you know. But I'll talk about I'll talk about that on the Discord. Come join us on the Discord. We'll chat there. Yeah, game over, man. Game over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen it. Um, I was gonna make another reference, but this isn't in time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward. At any rate, thank you all for joining us. I'll be on the Discord in about five or ten minutes. And in the meantime, I think Dave is there already and talking up a storm, I suspect. Thank you all for joining us, and we will see you uh, oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, we are having on uh, Christopher Mowdy to discuss human memory, its faults, uh, how it, it actually works as opposed to how we think it works, how we trick ourselves, and um, how we even invent memories really all the time. So I think that's going to be a great show. Eight o'clock tomorrow on In Time. Night all.